welcome everyone to today's Coffee with the Codex. I am Dot Porter. I am a curator here in the Kislak Center for Special Collections, Rare Books and Manuscripts in the University of Pennsylvania Libraries. Um, I split my time with the Kislak Center and the Schoenberg Institute for Manuscript Studies, which is a research and development institute focused, as you may know, or you could guess from the name, on manuscript studies, uh, sort of broadly defined. So we you have Western manuscripts and non-Western manuscripts, and we do a lot of digital work and a lot of physical work, um, that is work with the physical collections. My work in particular as curator of digital research services sort of covers both of these. Um, one of the things that I love to do is sort of uh, video outreach, which is what this program is. So every week for about 30 minutes, I take a book off of our shelves and show it off over Zoom. So you could look at these books um, in our digital library, and I hope that you will look at the digital images, but it's a very different experience seeing them moving around on the screen. And so that's why I love to do um, this program and also the other video programs that I do. So you're very welcome here. And um, I'm going to go ahead and start talking about the book. If you have questions or comments as we go along, I am aware that um, a lot of people who come to these know a lot more than I do. So if you have anything to add or any questions, please drop them in the chat and I will um, answer them as I can. I'll keep my eye on that. And I've heard I've heard more people coming in, so I'm going to drop I'm going to drop the links one more time for those of you who um, who weren't here. There we go. All right. So this is a manuscript that I have I have looked at this one many times. Which if you I come here a lot, you know that oftentimes I show books that I've only seen once or twice before, but this one I actually know pretty well. And so it's a real pleasure um, whenever I get to show it. This is a, a, a 15th century um, Italian herbal. So it's a book about plants, herbal. And it is um, it was written over a period of time. So this wasn't a book that one person sat down and wrote. This was a book that multiple people had their hands in. And one of the things that is um, that is particularly interesting about it is that it was it it has um, plants that are drawn in three different styles, actually more than three different styles, because there are a couple of drawings that were added later. Um, so it was primarily written over the course of about 50 years it, from the sort of early to the sort of mid late um, 15th century. And so we're going to take a look at it. Let's take a look at the binding first, though. It is what we call a limp parchment binding. So it's parchment that isn't on boards. So it's a bendy here. And it says Arbario. Someone has written on the cover. Um, and I, I, I don't know if this is going to work or, or not because the lights shine on the thing. But there we go. It says Arbario there on the cover. And it's sort of has a little flag drawn around it, which I think it looks Italian to me. I mean, Herbario clearly is Italian, um, but this is Italian. And it originally had little ties um, that, that have mostly sort of come apart, but you can see here where the ties were put in. And I think that this binding is fairly, I don't know if it's the original binding, but it's contemporary with the book. But you didn't come here for the binding, right? You wanted to, you wanted to see the plants. So let's take a look. Uh, here. There's the inside. Um, so we sort of start with this little introduction, and then immediately, immediately we get to the plants. And almost every uh, page in this manuscript has a plant drawn on it. And um, the, the three groups that we're going to see as we page through, um, the first group of drawings um, dates from, they think, the first half of the 15th century. So these were the ones that were drawn earlier. And you're going to see those on the right side of the page. So the recto, the recto side as we go through, and they're going to look kind of different from the ones that you're going to see on the left. And they are a little bit fanciful. They are not copied from real life. This is not somebody who went out 
into their yard or into the forest and looked at plants and drew them. This is someone who had another book that had plants drawn in it and they copied it. And this one here is a really great example of what, of what you get, because if you see, they have lots of little faces. There's a lot of faces here. And so it's very fanciful. And um, a lot of times it's not, I am not a botanist, but I have heard that uh, it's not, you can't tell even what the plants are just from looking at them because they don't bear resemblance to real plants, even though they are presumably copies of copies of copies of drawings of real plants. They do have labels. So up here, you'll see that there are labels and whether or not the labels are any sort of recognizable plant name um, is, uh, you know, debatable. I do in my, in my notes here, I have a list of every plant on every page and what the name is written there and what it might be. And so if you see one and you want to know what it is, I can sort of tell you from my notes. Um, so that's the first one is this one on the right. And you'll see, you'll see faces, you'll see, again, sort of fanciful things. The ones on the left look more like plants. These were um, done a bit later on. Let me see if I have a date. The second drawing probably dates from the last quarter of the century. So we're talking about, you know, 1475 to 1500. And, and they represent actually a change in art, herbal art that was happening at this time. That's one of the great things about this book is that it has both the sort of earlier and then the sort of later where they're like, no, we want them, we want the plants to look like real plants, like the plants that we know. And so these are going to be more recognizable. The roots will look like real roots and not like little critters, right? They won't have faces. Um, and these also have notes on them. So the ones you'll see on the right will have a label. The ones on the left will also have labels and will have text. And we believe that the person who made the text was the same person who, who did the um, who did the art. So you'll see um, some, in this case, it's written on top of the, um, on top of the drawing. I think that's on top of the drawing too. So they made, he made the drawings or she made the drawings and then went back and um, made text. They don't all have text. So here's one that doesn't have any sort of notes um, written on there. And the notes are going to be things like, Here's how you would prepare this um, this uh, plant for some kind of medical reason, usually. So if you have a cold, you can put it in hot water and make a tea and it will be good for you or something like that, or, you know, your stomach or whatever. Um, so there's something, let's see, something interesting going on here. Well, first of all, again, we have one of these examples of some kind of critter in the form of the root on this side. And then we have um, a more sort of realistic looking colorful uh, plant, but then we have this. And this is yet another uh, thing that's going on. So this has been, let me see if I can figure out when this was added. So this is on 10 verso, excuse me, 10 verso entirely as color. I think this has been added. This is one that's certainly been added later. Um, and I think it's some kind of pod. And I don't know if it's related to this, um, to this one or not. Wondering if caraway is in here. I'll, we'll go through a little bit and then I'll see if I can find caraway in the list, or maybe we'll see it as we come through. So this is someone added this later. Uh, and you see this a few times where there are even more that have been added. And then we see little, even additional drawings sort of added in the, in there. Some of these are really great. There's a, there are a couple of mandrakes, uh, which we will, which we'll see. 
let's see, and the color on the recto, I just love it, especially the red and there's some blue, um, blue as well. Let's see, that's very nice. Here's another one that has been um, sort of added in and it may be that this is somebody else's version of this plant. It's so hard to tell because they don't look like what the plants really look like. So it's sort of hard to tell sometimes what they're doing or if they just found this space and, uh, and put it in. Let's see. All right, so this is sort of this is sort of fun. So I'm going to sit here. You know what? I'm going to go, uh, Garrett. I'm going to see if I can find caraway for you, um, in my list. Caraway. I don't know. Caraway. Caraway. Mm -hmm. My plan. I was just thinking about this is to make a would love to have like a digital edition of this that doesn't just have the images but that has the the names of the plants and then you could search it and you wouldn't have to look through so I'm not I didn't see caraway but that doesn't mean it's not there it's also the person who put this list together was clearly a botanist and used um a lot of uh, the Latin Latin names of plants. And so I don't know the Latin name of caraway. So maybe it was there and I just didn't see it. Um, let's see. So those are the two. And then the third, the third group is, um, oh, I think that was the primrose on four verso. Let's see. They might be mixed, let's see, mixed together. Oh, right. So this is this is actually, this we looked at this one early. Th this is actually from the third group. So here's the first group is this type on this side. The second group is I think like this one, the more naturalistic one. And then the third group is even more naturalistic. So four verso, 24 verso. I don't think that I can tell the difference actually between the second and third so much. Oh gosh, that does look much more realistic, much more like it was drawn from, um, from that. So Steph has a comment. The opposing pages are seldom the same as those on the right botanically. Um, look at cyclamen. I don't, I didn't see where cyclamen was. But yeah, I think, I think you're right. I think that there was no attempt, whoever came in to do the um the ones on the facing page, they they're they weren't attempting to sort of do the same plants. Um there is at the very beginning, um, so this plant is labeled with Bonafacchia here. I don't know what Bonafacchia is. The person who wrote our notes doesn't know what Bonafacchia is. But if you turn the page, this is also labeled Bonafacchia, but it, I mean, maybe that's supposed to be the same plant, but it looks very different. It, it only has one stalk. The one thing is that the, the leaves are a, a, a directly across from each other. Like botanically, that's the only thing I can see. This one doesn't have a leaf on the top while the other one does. So even when they're labeled with the same plant name, it's hard to tell if they are, you know, are they, is it supposed to be the same plant or, and because we, we don't even know what the plant, can I reverse this? I don't understand, reverse. Um, Steph is asking me to reverse, is this upside down? Is there something, um, oh, turn the page back. Oh, sorry, yeah. You can also see this in the, um, uh, in the digital, the digital uh, images in the record. So here's, the three, this one has three stalks. 
and has the leaf on top. And then that one doesn't have that, doesn't have that leaf on top. So there's that. So I want to keep moving because I think we might be able to see every every page um, page in this because they're so some of them are very I mean I, I like all of them. Um, I really have to say though I I love the idea of the plants that that are sort of almost imaginary um, in that they don't be necessarily like bear resemblance to. Um, to the to the real to the real plants, so uh, Lynn uh, has a comment. In lots of books of ours and other illustrated texts, the margins are often full of highly naturalistic botanical paintings. Mm -hmm. So the recto illustrations here are serving a different purpose to the later verso forms. I think so. It's it's a little bit hard to tell what the purpose um, of the recto was because there's no writing accompanying it from the same period. So there have been a few pages we've seen where there was writing that was added later. Um, and typically, if you know, if I'm thinking about herbals, one of the things that I would say about them is that it's they're supposed to be some kind of like practical guide with notes on here's how you use the plant to do X, Y, and Z. And so if you have pictures of plants, that don't seem to resemble any kind of real plant. And there's no notes on it. Like, what is it for? Is it just to look at because it's pretty? Was somebody, somebody maybe had another book that with the plants in it and they were copying them um, because they wanted to copy them? I don't like, I really honestly uh, don't know. Um, don't know at all. Um, yeah, so Steph is saying the, the recto and verso seem to go together, at least in that one instance, um, they do. I don't, I don't know if it's um, the same through the whole, through the whole book. I don't, I don't think so. Um, and then it's also interesting to me that consistently on the recto side, um, that you have these sort of earlier ones that were put in. And then one artist, the, sec the artist of the second group went through and added drawings to the verso side, but not one page after another. So they left blanks. And then the third uh, artist came through and, and put some in the blanks. But then as we get further on, there will be more and more pages that were left blank. So there aren't drawings on every single page. And then you have, of course, whoever this is, we've seen this hand before, who came in with, with sort of ink pens and I guess made, in this case, kind of made a copy of, um, of this one. So this is our third, this is our third artist again, who is much more um, realistic than either, even though this one uh, is much more realistic than the than our facing page, but that, but I think it's got the same writing there. So a real, it, it, it's a collaborative work, but a collaborative work that was made over a long period of time, over this whole century um, with at least three different artists. For, I mean, really four different artists because you have this one here and then whoever was adding, um, adding the text. Here we have the label that I think the original artist made. And then whoever drew this has added more, which this might be, I don't know when, I mean, it's not a scientific name because the scientific names didn't come along until later. Um, but there's that, ooh, Karen Reeds uh, discussed LJS 419 in the article. Oh, I should read that before I talk about this next time. Uh, that's great. Thank you. Yeah. And so there's, you can email her for PDF. Karen, is it okay if I, if I put that in you on YouTube as well, if people want to email you, because that would be, that would be great. Um, and I'd like to read it too. So 
there's more of this. No, no. Here we go. Someone has has added a second uh, a second um, root system coming out that mirrors the other one. I just think this is so fun. I don't know if it was supposed to be fun, but I think it's fun looking at it now. I want to get to the um, more of these little heads, these weird little heads. What pigments are used for the green color? I don't know what um, what the pigments would be for um, for any of them, unfortunately. And I don't know, is there anyone on the call who might be able to answer Hannah's question about the green, the green pigments? I don't know if it would be mineral or if it would be some kind of um, something from a plant. Here's a little guy, a shared root. Mar, um, I've been working with uh, our um, maker space. We have a maker space over in another part of the library, and they do a lot of making patterns. They do um, patterns for like making stuffed animal kind of things, and they made a stuffed animal out of um, in this design, which is kind of weird and fun. I think. Oh, here we go. So here's a mandrake, a lady mandrake um, here. And there's a, even another mandrake. So this is the original art artist um, who made that one. And there's two, I think there might be two more mandrakes here. So here is another mandrake, which is a man, I think. Mandrake, although I can't tell. We've got the dog. So the idea of the mandrake is that you have to have a dog pull it out of the ground because it will scream when it comes up out of the ground. Um, no, this is a, a, another female, a feminia, femina mandrake. Um, and this is interesting because you've got the, the sort of leafy part, the part that would be above the ground in color in this style. And then it's almost like this has been added a little bit later in pen, but then the writing, I think, is over top. It's not that the drawing was done on top of the writing, it's that the writing is on top of the drawing because the the writing sort of skips over the arms. So the writing does not go over the arms. And then they're like, well, I just give up. And so then they they're writing sort of over the legs here, and then they try to skip over the legs again. So this sort of art, art, writing, different people coming in at different times and doing it. And here is the man mandrake. So you, again, you have the part across the top um, and then this added in pen and then the writing sort of done around the human form there. So uh, Sarah BC says uh, regarding the green pigment, my best guess would be, um, vertigris at this period, but I'm not a pigment expert. I am not. I wish that I were. There were many things that I wish I could be an expert at. So this this guy is kind of famous. I don't know. A lot of people get very excited when they see him because apparently there is a Pokemon who's like a little blue beat kind of, and I can't remember his name, but anyway, there he is. And I love his, he's got this expression on his face. Like he just he has just seen too much. And I just love, whoop, I love him so much. So there we go. Oddish. Thank you, Hannah. <laughs> Oddish is the name of that little character. Uh, and then Steph Drew is adding, uh, I think that early green pigments were also plant-based. I think so. I have a book um, that I, that I read for children, um, which is called Marguerite Makes a Book, which is set in 14th century France. And in that book, uh, Marguerite uses um, uh, parsley to make her green. And I don't know how realistic that is. Um, really, it's good for kids because kids understand kind of what parsley was and it gets the sense of like using plants to make, um, to make the pigment. But I'm not gonna tell you, I think this is, I think it's probably not, not parsley. Um, here's another one of these 
that's added quite a lot later. So now we're getting to the part of the part of the book where you're going to see a lot less on the facing page. Um, and what you do see is going to be, I think, these ad much later added ones. So here's another one. And whoever did this has also added the um, added the names there. Yeah, to not very artistic later, but not artistic. And this, I'm more, I'm really impressed with this red shade, um, which is really something else. More of these sort of critters either wrapped around. He doesn't even look like he's part of the root system. He's just a something that's sort of wrapping around. Um, Let's see. Oh, Karen. Uh, Karen recently found a comparable watercolor to the plant called Paris 25 Recto in a batch of manuscripts, otherwise naturalistic botanical images in the Basel archive. Oh, that's so interesting. Let's see. I'm going to just take a quick look at 25 Recto so we can see. I mean, I mean, they must have been, you know, they were copied around. They, they were passed around and they copied around. Um, yeah, here we go, Paris. Yeah, this doesn't look like a plant. You know, I've never seen a plant that looks like this. And yet you're finding them, you know, in other in other places too. I just I love this idea. And sometimes when um when I show this uh, these days on social media, it a lot of times we'll have people come in and say that looks like the Voynich manuscript. Um and that's because the Voynich manuscript, part of it is essentially a, you know, a 15th century herbal, which is why it looks like that, right? Because, because it's a genre and that's what it looks like. Um, but the, it does have that kind of same look because of the sort of fanciful, I can't remember if the Voynich manuscript, I think it does have faces in it, but the same kind of thing is, is, um, you know, it was a genre and you're going to see it in 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 a lot of books, um, which is kind of kind of interesting. And these they just get weirder, I think, as the as the book goes along. Weirder and sort and more colorful. And let's see, we have we have a couple of minutes, so I'm just going to keep I'm just going to keep paging through, and we'll see if anything else strikes our fancy. Oh, here's. Here is another one of the, I think that's the second. I do, I find it hard to tell the difference between their second and third set, but I think these are second ones. It's like, it just gets more and more realistic over time. Um, Michelle, yes, the Voynich does have faces as well. Um, oh, look at them. They look very happy there. Um, Karen says, if you look at the Paris quad, oop, Paris quadrifolia, you'll see the same quadrilater quadrilateral symmetry of everything. The Cloisters Garden website has a great picture of the living plant. Oh, so it, it is a plant. It is a real plant. That's me not knowing my plant. So um, let's see, Flavia has put a link in the chat and I will, um, I'll link that in the in the YouTube when I post this on YouTube. Oh, look at this. This is very weird. This this is clearly the same um the same way that they did the um the mandrake. We have this guy here. And I'm even seeing I haven't really been paying attention to the text, but I am seeing that they're sort of interlinear notes or maybe somebody has come through and is fixing things I don't know really really fascinating I think that there's you know so Karen has has done some work on this manuscript which is great um but I'd love to see to see more I want to know everything about it um because it's just it's just so interesting and I really I think my favorite thing is that it was this collaboration almost an accidental collaboration. Um, 
All right, Sophie has a link regarding the bona focia, which we saw at the very start of the book, um, found a link for that plant. Um, so I'll include that link too. And maybe we can see if it's, oh, something, I don't know what's going on there. See if, um, oh, that's very pretty. If it rep if it looks like either of the either of the plants at the front, um, there. So it is one minute past uh, twelve thirty. So we should probably finish up. Um, but thank you all so much for sitting with me while I ramble and look through this. Um, really, really neat um, book. Oh, maybe one last thing before we go. The very, I want to say it's the very end. That, it's like any, nothing like this at the, yes, Karen, <laughs> Karen knew what I was doing. Um, at the very end, this is the, the, actually the print of a leaf. And this is, I just saw a talk on this at the Schoenberg, um, the Schoenberg Symposium that was last week. Um, I never knew about this. But so over the course of the 15th century, as you saw in this book, you know, you've got this sort of getting closer and closer to really natural, naturalistic looking. And that this is sort of the epitome where you're where you're taking a a, a leaf and essentially making it into a stamp. And so this is like how na how naturalistic can we get what we actually got a um got a leaf here so not the leaf itself but like the print of it so and I think it's great that it's at the very end like that seems to be I don't know it's like here we are so um thank you Steph yes I'm going to I, I think I will next year I'll 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 make this one of my things to make an edition of this so that you can come and see what these plants are called um and what we think they are so Thank you. Yes, Karen, the, the Schoenberg talk was recorded. So I'll, we'll get that up as soon as we can. So I'm going to go away. But thank you so much, everyone. And I hope I'll see you again. Mm -hmm.